those of you who follow my channel at all know of my interest in digital fabrication and especially CNC work and laser engraving. About a year and a half ago, I published a video on this channel that showed a laser add-on for a CNC, and it was a company called Opt Lasers. The device is added on to an existing CNC. In my case, it was an X-Carve, and I really like this laser. I still use it. It's it's the one that I, I typically use for any laser engraving that I have. But I received some questions after that video from people who were asking about what there were as far as options for someone who didn't have a CNC and what was out there as far as desktop DIY type laser engravers. So I started to do some research and reading online and this company called MakeBlock, they make this device, the X-Tool D1. They also make CO2 lasers. Um, the D1 is a diode laser, it's a 10 watt diode laser. And this company sort of emerged as the leader as far as I could tell in desktop type laser engraver. And so I passed that information on and I didn't think much more about it until I received an email about a month ago from this company, MakeBlock. They asked if I would be interested in receiving one of these machines and uh, assembling it and doing a quick review on it. So I thought I would see if it lives up to all the hype that I had read about. And so I told them I was interested and about a week later, two weeks later, this box arrived. And so in this video, I'm going to assemble this. Um, it's pretty straightforward, it takes 15, 20 minutes to assemble. And then I'm gonna go through some of the software installation, the different options there, and then show a few examples of different materials uh, being engraved. So we'll get started with the assembly. Really is pretty straightforward. Again, this is a 10 watt laser. Um, X-Tool makes a five watt and a 10 watt. And I think coming out soon is a 20 watt, which uses the same framework and just uses a different higher powered laser head. So this specific laser head that we're using today uses two five watt beams that are concentrated together to make a 10 watt laser head. The fit and finish of this machine is, is really, really nice. You can see how when these pieces go together, they fit perfectly. The screw holes line up. Um, it's just a, it seems like pretty high quality. It's probably overbuilt a little bit, um, which is nice. It's very strong, very sturdy, uh, no, not flimsy at all. On the back of this machine, on each corner, in addition to the four screws that hold the corner together, there is another hole in the center, and that is an adjustment screw. That A screw goes through that hole and connects into a block that holds the belt pulley. And so by loosening or tightening that screw, you can adjust the tension on the Y-axis belts. Next is putting the gantry on for the x-axis. This is held on with four screws. And then in the center of this one, you can see there's also a hole for an adjustment screw. This tightens and loosens the x-axis belt. The next piece to install is this rod that travels across the back of the machine. And what it does is it transfers the stepper motor that runs the Y axis across and runs the Y on the right side of the machine. Connect the belt to it, then line it up with the stepper motor shaft. There's a coupler that spans that gap. And so that synchronizes the left and the right Y axis. Here you can see the adjustment of that Y-axis belt. You loosen up the locking bolt on the side, use the center bolt to adjust the tension of the belt. Once you get it where you want it, then you can lock it back down with that screw. Next is the wiring. This is really very simple. It's all color coded. The yellow plug goes in the yellow slot on the circuit board and then runs straight over to the Y-axis stepper motor.
and then there's just one other wiring harness. It has a red plug and a white plug. They go on to the circuit board. One of them goes to the x-axis stepper motor. The other one runs over and powers the actual laser head of the machine. This little thumb screw is what holds the z-axis for the laser head. You adjust the height of the, the laser head and then you tighten it down with this little thumb screw. There's holes along the x-axis that uh, allow you to zip tie the wire into place and to kind of keep it out of the way. There are no drag chains on this machine at all, so the wires just kind of flex as the pieces move. The x-axis is not a problem. The y-axis wire tends to kind of just lay on the side of the machine and, and could possibly work its way into the workspace. So it um, took some steps in a little while to try to alleviate that problem, but... Um, it's one of the one of the few drawbacks that I uh, I found in this machine. The D1 comes with a micro SD card, and that just gets inserted into a slot on the uh, circuit board in the machine. And that's really it as far as assembly. If you go to support.xtool.com, you'll land on this page, and from here you can choose the Xtool D1. This page has everything you need to get this machine up and running. The software that comes with this machine is called LaserBox, and it's a pretty rudimentary piece of software for getting this thing up and running. I only used it to do the firmware update. The reason I only used it for that firmware update is because that update adds the capability to use Lightburn. Lightburn is the leading software out there really for laser engraving. It is a paid piece of software, but it's very well supported. It's very well documented. There's all kinds of tutorials online. So it's just a, it's a great piece of software for anything to do with laser engraving. And uh, the price is not bad. So it's definitely something to look into. So the first thing we're going to do on this page is download and install LaserBox Basic. Pretty straightforward. Click on the link to download it and then execute the file and install the software. When you first start up LaserBox, you'll most likely come to this screen, which asks you to do a firmware update. There's also a switch on the circuit board of the D1, and it says to make sure that the mechanical switch that's on that circuit board is to the left. Mine already was pushed to the left, and so I just left it there, did the uh, firmware update, and everything worked out fine. So back on the support page, there's a link for a user manual for Xtool D1 Lightburn software. When you click on that, that will send you to the page that has the configuration file download. And what's great about this is you download this file, then you install Lightburn, and you import this configuration file, and it does all the settings for the D1 in Lightburn. So there's no manually configuring anything, setting up parameters, setting up work area, um, setting up the offset for the crosshairs, none of that stuff. It's all in the configuration file, so you simply install the software, import the configuration file, and you're ready to go. So we can do that here. Once you have Lightburn open, if you click on the lower right under device, you'll see a dialog window. To add it, you click import, you select that configuration file that you just downloaded, and then you just click OK, and that's it. All those configuration settings are now in there. They're stored for your machine, and you don't have to make any any more adjustments for the uh, settings in Lightburn. As I said earlier, it even sets the offset for this crosshair on the laser head. This crosshair is 16 millimeters off from the actual laser beam. So by having that offset already in Lightburn, you can effectively use this crosshair as a center point for setting up your jobs in, in Lightburn. So one of the great features about this specific machine is this little leg that folds down to set the focal length for the laser beam. You simply flip it down, loosen up the thumb screw, drop the laser head down until it contacts the work surface, tighten the thumb screw, flip the leg back up, and you're ready to go. It sets the focal length perfectly from that point. So now I'm just going to go through and engrave on several different materials. The first one is anodized aluminum, and this is just a piece from a uh, an Incra 
square that I have. I was really most impressed with the anodized aluminum engraving. The edges turned out really crisp and clear and it just uh, looked pretty amazing. Next is a piece of faux leather. This turned out really nice too. Um, I made the mistake of kind of rubbing it after I got it uh, engraved and so it, it kind of smeared the, the black in the lettering. So I don't know if there's a process for sealing that or somehow to, to keep that from happening, but the actual engraving turned out really nice. Next is stainless steel. That turned out great as well. The markings that were made on this stainless steel were permanent. Uh, they were fairly dark and, and burned in. I've seen a lot of slate coasters um, online being sold, and so I thought I'd give that a try. I had never engraved um, on slate before. So here's a process of setting that up. Lightburn has a feature called framing, which you can click before you actually start the job and it will actually draw a frame around the space that is going to be used for that job. And so it's pretty handy to make sure you're in the right spot before you actually start the job. Um, this engraving on the slate came out beautifully. Um, it, the edges were real clean and real crisp and you'll see here in a second, um, just came out really nice. The D1 also comes with a rotary tool, which is pretty cool for engraving on cylindrical objects. It can be used in laser box or can also be used in light burn. The next material is just standard leather and uh, you can see it turned out really nice as well. And the last one is birch plywood. And aside from it having an important message, it also turned out really well. The D1 also comes with these leg extenders. These are handy for if you're engraving onto a taller object or if you're going to use the rotary device. And this is just a quick demonstration of how the smartphone app works. It's pretty intuitive, um, pretty straightforward. Once you get everything set up in the app, you set up the job, you send it to the machine, it asks you just to push the button. There's a big round button on the side of the machine and that starts the job. This did work. It's a little bit clunky, um, not the most elegant phone app, but uh, it did work. And uh, I, I don't know that um, I have much of a use for it, but it, uh, it was interesting and it, it did actually work. So overall, I have to say that I really do like this machine. Um, it lived up to all of the uh, reviews that I had read about it before I got it. If you look around YouTube, there are a lot of videos. This company sends a lot of these out, and I think they do it because they're confident that the users are going to like it. I have a really small workshop, so I have to be careful about tools that I add. And I like this one enough that I actually built a cabinet for it to fold up into and keep it clean and keep sawdust off of it. A few pros and cons that I just want to touch on. As I said earlier, the fit and finish of this is exceptional. It's, it's really well built. It's like I said, it's probably overbuilt and that's really nice. It's very strong, very sturdy. One thing that this machine has that many of the other desktop DIY type laser engravers don't is steel wheels, steel roller wheels and steel rails that they run on. Assembly is easy. The software is pretty easy to understand. A big pro for this machine is that it does support light burn, which is, for me, a must, and I think that uh, for many others. A couple of cons, and they're small, sort of nitpicky, but cable management is one. The cable that runs to the laser head along the x-axis is fine. The one that runs along the right y-axis kind of lays on the table, and it can 
move around and could actually get into your work area. Um, also, something that is a super nitpicky is that thumb screw on the Z axis. That could be moved so it's not right in front of the gantry. It's hard to kind of get a hold of it and get it tight. If they moved it up in that little dovetail joint where it was above the gantry, you could reach it much more easily. So that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it has some good information. If you're interested in this machine, I believe they have a sale going on for the next several days. And also, if you'd like to support this channel, there is an affiliate link in the description. I appreciate you watching, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.